you envision the new age, part of it is here. The camera with brains. Canon T70. 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 European Camera of the Year 84. Canon T70. 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 Welcome to this old camera. Today I'm showing you the Canon T70. Now, photography enters the computer age with the revolutionary new Canon T70. Computer program to give you all the answers with total push button control. Auto loading, auto wind on, auto wind off. That's the incredible Canon T70. So advanced, it's got to be simple. The Canon T70 debuted in April 1984 and was the second of the T-series of Canon cameras. Considered cutting edge of the time, the 8-bit onboard computer meant several options for program modes including shutter priority and three full auto modes depending on your preferences and lens type. It won the Good Design Award and the European Camera of the Year Award. An accessory called the Command Back 70 allowed you to switch out the back panel and among other things, date stamp your photos and program for time lapse. The Canon 277T flash was also made for the T70. Everett Ordner wrote a rave review in Popular Science in June 1984 claiming it may be too good for amateurs. Bob Schwalberg wrote in April 1984's Popular Photography that its starkingly functional T-style body is leatherless, leverless, crankless, and amazingly electronified, the big LCD screen is a wonder to behold. Jerry O'Neill did an extensive lab test and breakdown of just about everything in Popular Photography's February 1985 issue, giving a bit more of an even-handed review. Advertising claimed that it was the camera of the future and encouraged you to push on and while the onboard computer was superior to that of the A-series released in the late 1970s, it isn't without its flaws. Canon T70. It makes the great shot simple. After all, Canon would start abandoning the FD mount entirely less than four years later. A subscriber to Popular Photography wrote in early 1988 dismayed because someone sold him a T70, only to find it was discontinued. Popular Photography wrote back saying, With the coming proliferation of autofocus SLRs from almost every camera maker, many manufacturers are trimming down their manual focus SLR lines to make room for the new AF SLRs. They go on to say, the discontinuance of the T70 indicates that an AF SLR in that range is probably on the way. They were right. October of that year, the Canon EOS 750 and 850 QD were released at reduced prices from the 650 and 620 the year before. The 850 was almost half the cost of the 650. From 1984 to 1988, the T70 went from camera of the future to second prize in a popular mechanics photo contest. You can see some of that sleek, simple design did survive to the new generation, but in the end, the T70 almost did itself in, because the natural evolution after auto exposure was autofocus. From here we'll go over some basics of its operation, then I'll put it through tests to make sure it's working. After that I'll go out and shoot with it and finally I'll share some thoughts and tell you where you can get one, how much it'll set you back, and if it's worth it. Installing the batteries is standard, no surprises. To check the battery, just hold the BC button and three lines will appear to show a full charge. Mounting the lens is pretty straightforward. Find the red dots on the camera body and lens, match them up and turn the lens clockwise. To remove, push the lock on the lens and turn counterclockwise. Keep in mind not all FD lenses will have this mounting lock. To set the ISO, hold the ISO button like a shift key and use the up and down buttons. 
Loading the camera with film is also really standard. Just place the canister inside, pull the film to the orange mark, and close up. You have the option of average metering, which takes most of the image with a center weight, a partial meter, which takes about 10 to 12% from the center, and a self timer that counts down from 10. Cycling through shooting modes is similar to setting the ISO by holding the mode button like a shift key and pressing up and down on the right. Setting your shutter speed while in shutter priority is pretty much how you'd predict at this point, except no shift button. There's also a lock button on the front which will prevent you from accidentally changing your shutter settings. Having a look inside the viewfinder we see a split image type focus system. Half pressing the shutter or the button in the center of the lock switch will trigger the meter, a blinking light indicates under or over exposure, and remember it's displaying what it thinks to be the correct exposure, not your current setting. The film advances automatically and when you reach the end of the roll it will let you know. Rewinding the film is a standard lock on the bottom, which requires you to push a button in and another over. The camera will do the rest. I use a homemade shutter tester I found on eBay to make sure the settings on the camera match how long the shutter curtain is actually open for. Here are the results of my Canon T70. All cameras' shutter speeds will deteriorate over time, However, electronic film cameras tend to perform better as we see here. This chart shows the results compared to the readout. In purple is where the actual shutter speed meets the readout. Up here is where it separates. The blue is what the shutter speed is supposed to be, and the red is the actual speed. The biggest deviation here is that 1 1,000th of a second reads to 1,111th of a second or about one-tenth of an f-stop resulting in slightly darker photos. In reality, you're not likely going to notice. I also compared the light meter to a handheld. I compared the partial meter on the T70 to the spot meter on the 758DR on an evenly lit surface and got identical results. Because the shutter speeds are reliable and the meter still works to factory standards, I'll be able to use the program modes knowing I'm getting what was originally intended in this model. There are next to no foamy light seals in this camera, just a few tiny squares. They look intact and did not smear when I lightly touched them. I shoot and develop using all Kodak products including Kodak Triax 400, HC110 for developer, an indicator stop bath, powder fixer, hypoclear, and PhotoFlow 200. To test the Canon T70 I went to the old neighborhood of Ramsey here in Calgary, which borders an industrial park. Ramsey was established in the 1880s and there's a lot of interest here if you like texture or that rustic look. I shot in full auto because I wanted to see what the camera would consider a proper exposure. I used two lenses that you'll most likely find with the T70, the FD 50mm f1.8 and the FD 35-70 3.5-4.5 kit lens. I scanned my negatives using an Epson V500. These are straight scans without adjusting for levels or curves. Let's talk about some pros and cons. It takes two AA batteries, it makes it super easy to find replacements as you're likely only 15 minutes from a 7-Eleven. An electronic system means a more accurate shutter over time. It's simple to use, there's tons of cheap FD lenses to choose from, and a reliable light seal design is unlikely in need of replacement. Loud. 
Everything about this camera is loud, and I imagine things like the auto advance are even louder with age. No shutter display in the viewfinder. Even though it goes all the way down to ISO 12, it only goes up to ISO 1600. No aperture priority. Even though it won me over with its use of common batteries and simplicity in the design, I'm much more likely to use it as backup to my A-series cameras which use $20 batteries. You can expect to pay about $20 to $40 on eBay for the body, but if you're willing to wait a bit, you can get it for less than half that at a garage sale. In the last few years I've come across two of this particular model and four from the T-series. All I obtained for free or less than $10, and almost always with a lens, usually the 50mm 1.8. If you're selling one, the model to look for is the more rare US Navy version. It will have an engraving on the back panel on the right hand side, and its original lens. Either way, you're going to sell it faster if you bundle it with multiple lenses or multiple bodies. Thanks for watching the pilot episode of this old camera. I hope to have another episode and a schedule for you really soon. In the meantime, please like and subscribe and let me know which camera you think I should profile next in the comments down below. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time, stay classic. Canon the official camera of the National Hockey League.